the uh, injury report is not good for us right now, so I'll start with that. Um, we lost Tano Pazignan, our uh, starting defensive end with uh, MCL and uh, PCL and cartilage, so pretty sure he's done for the season. Uh, Corey Majors, our inside linebacker, uh, looks like he's out for the season as well. And we lost uh, Austin Medley, uh, one of our very good running backs for at least four to six weeks. And Joey Harmon, an inside linebacker starter for us, is uh, probably not going to play. We're listing him as doubtful. Uh, we'll see on Friday if he can if he can do anything. So that tied in with John Robertson with a broken hand, and you know we are not the team um, that. I think a lot of people have on paper as five or six in the country. You know, we are just like everybody else, very, very vulnerable uh, to injury. And, you know, JMU took it to us in the first half. Uh, they have 12 Division I transfers, nine of them started against us. And it looked like the men against the boys for a while until, you know, we settled down and adjusted to uh, the, their style of play. The quarterback, uh, Vad Lee, was transferred from Georgia Tech, and he ran around and threw the ball all over the place. So uh, we, we had a pretty, pretty good gut check game with regards to JMU because we were behind by 10 in the third quarter, uh, and they were playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we turned the ball over three times in the first half. That didn't help our cause. But then in the second half, we were able to get a couple of turnovers, which we converted the touchdowns and got us back in the game. And finally, you know, we broke uh, the situation open, I think pretty much in the fourth quarter. So what that told me is that we have a pretty good football team. I think JMU is probably a mid to upper level team in our league, but we needed to play somebody like that at our level so I would have a little better idea. I think when we played Fordham, even though they're ranked, uh, they were a top 10 team, uh, I'm not sure they are, <clears throat> and I guess that remains to be seen. I know Syracuse was pretty good. So uh, coming off of the game, I would normally be, be very uh, you know, solid about where we are. With the injury situation we have now, uh, we are mixing and matching. Um, the Penn game for us uh, is always very, very difficult. As I mentioned to our players today, let's get something straight. You know, we won this game twice on the last play of the game. So uh, Penn is coming off of a very difficult loss on the road, and they're up against the wall. Um, it's a very difficult team to play. Uh, they have always been difficult for us. Uh, Al's defensive scheme <coughs> is um, fantastic. We struggle with it every single year. and. I've said this before, Penn does the best job of any team we play of defending their home field. And uh, this is going, going to be uh, as tough a game for us as we have on the schedule. We know that, especially in the condition that we're in. So, you know, I'm very concerned about it. Uh, I know it's Al's last game at Penn, and all the writers have been asking me, you know, about that. And, you know, I would tell you that uh, it's always sad for me to see, you know, a warrior who's been around for so many years and done it, uh, like all the coaches in this room, uh, in a first-class fashion, um, the right way, and uh, just a, a terrific football program. Uh, having spent six years in the Ivy League myself, um, I saw some of the legendary coaches, Bob Blackman at Dartmouth and down the line, uh, Carm Cosa at Yale. In my estimation, uh, Al Bagnoli is the best football coach in the history uh, of the Ivy League. And uh, I've, I've, I've been there when the great ones were there. Uh, did it over time. And, you know, when you're at Yale or you're at Harvard, especially back in the day, those were schools that just dominated in recruiting. Uh, and Penn was not a school that could line up against Harvard and Yale and Princeton and take kids. And Al turned that culture around. So um, I, I uh, respect 
the program greatly. I'll miss the opportunity to coach against him, but we will have many opportunities to have lunch at Fellini's and eat Italian food. You're going to have to pick up the tab. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, so I think all the coaches here uh, know Al uh, over the years. He's been fantastic for uh, our game, uh, not only on a national level, but more specifically with the coaches in the room has been willing to have guys at their place and you know, open the playbook to them and so on. So uh, in, that, in that particular uh, game uh, Saturday, uh, for all of us, uh, we'll, we'll certainly know that we're playing against one of the greatest that, that ever coached. Um, <coughs> as Al said, the game comes down to, you know, two teams who have a lot at stake right now, uh, trying to, it'll be a typical Penn Villanova game, a very, very physical game. Questions? Do you give them any kind of rocking chair or gift or, or what? Is there, is there a presentation? I would take points. Just talking like 10. Don't know if Villanova golf bag. A Villanova golf bag. That'd be a good thing. If you guys are druthers, do you want to play this game? I mean, you know, is, is it? Uh, it? It's not really, uh, you know, I mean, if you take a look over the years, even though We've been fortunate enough to win some of the games. Um, I mean, they were Ivy League champions. I don't think anybody wants to play uh, a team that's the perennial Ivy League champion. And for us, uh, that 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 that's a tough that's a tough game for us. Uh, you know, the Division One game I hate, but we play it for money, and and that's something that is just built into the program. But you, you know, now you're playing Fordham who's in a Patriot League, and they're the best team in that league, and now you're playing Penn, who has traditionally been the best team in that league. Uh, I'd prefer to play, um, y y you know, somebody that we could line up and know that we're probably two or three touchdowns better than going into the game, because the CAA is a war zone. And it's, I mean, we just came out of the JMU game. We lose three players. Uh, it, it's, you know, not the, not the game that, you know, that I would say that's, that's the one we want. I do like the fact that we don't have to travel. Uh, I do love playing at Franklin Field, um, being a kid who grew up in the area. Uh, historically for me, I mean, my first football game, I watched Notre Dame play Penn in Franklin Field. So for me, that part of it's great. But you're playing against, you know, a guy who's a defensive specialist and – lines up and gives you every look in the book and you're still trying to figure it out after the game's over, you're scratching your head and going like, oh, all right, thank God we made a couple big plays or we would have gotten beat. Tough game. Al has talked about your influence on him. What has his influence been on you? Well, I, I respect, you know, I, I knew Al when he was the coach at Union. And so for a Division three coach uh, to ascend to the level he's at, I did the same thing when I was coaching at St. Lawrence. Um, nobody's going to St. Lawrence or Union to look for the head football coach. And so when, when you crawl your way out of that level of football to try to, to, to move up and see if you can advance and do a job at another level, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I think he's been a great role model uh, with regards to this, this is what can be can be done if you roll up your sleeves and you work hard and surround yourself with good assistance. Uh, also, I think the physicality of his program. Uh, when you come out of that game, you you are definitely black and blue. That's for sure. Is there any amount of reflection for you on the amount of time that both you and Al hold your held your respective positions? Because that doesn't happen too much in college football. Anymore. Yeah, we're we're a vanishing breed. Uh, we're a vanishing breed because, uh, you know, I always give everybody the model of, if you ever read that book, Who Moved My Cheese? Uh, it's a great little book to read. Uh, and at Villanova and at Penn, they move your cheese every day. Okay, so you're trying to get to the cheese and, you know, all of a sudden it's been moved and it's in another alleyway. And so you have to have the ability to work with all types and kinds of people. I mean, I've been through five athletic directors and three presidents. They're moving your cheese a lot, 
and and I think Al's has run into the same thing, especially in the admissions office. So um, I think that's something that you have to overcome, and then convince the people in admissions that maybe you're going to take a kid that is special, and you need a break on that guy, and then you need to make sure he graduates. So I think we've done that, and all the coaches in the room have done that. And that's critically important at a good academic place because when you face that admissions guy two years down the line and, you know, you've had three of those top kids flunk out of school or mess up, you know, it hurts your credibility. So I think that's, that's important. And so we've been able to jump fences, hopscotch around, and do what you have to do and still put a competitive product at the end of the day.